Paleo Joe here. It's been a while since I've been on um, the Facebook video, so I thought I'd uh, do another quick little video. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about crinoids today, but if you're really interested, you can Google what a crinoid is. They're echinoderms, uh, ancient creatures lived on the bottom of the saltwater tropical seas uh, related to uh, starfish. Uh, they are echinoderms. Uh, I did a video about these guys a while back talking more about how the creature lived, what the basic body structures were. Uh, today I'm going to talk mostly about the crinoid calyxes, the tops of the crinoids, and we'll show you a couple of uh, examples of uh, the holdfasts and things like that. But you know, sometimes you got to be in the right place at the right time. You just got to be really lucky. Let me tell you a story about a man named Joe. Um, several years ago, I was very lucky. Uh, I was working with somebody up in the Alpena area, and I was gained access to a quarry that is a private quarry. You just can't get into it. I was allowed to go in there for about a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to an hour, and I came upon a site uh, where, that had a lot of crinoid calyxes, those balls that are at the top of the crinoid. What happened back then was there was a, a storm uh, 365 million years ago, and the storm came across the ocean and destroyed the ecosystem. It destroyed these crinoids, these creatures that grew on these tall stalks. They disarticulated, they fell apart, and they rolled into a depression in the, in the uh, uh, saltwater tropical seas or shallow lagoons. We know it was a depression because when you look at the side of the hill where the crinoids came out of, there was a clay layer, a lens. Basically, it was like shaped like a lens on a pair of glasses. And what had happened is these crinoid calyxes, these balls, rolled into this depression. They were covered up by a slurry, and they became fossilized. As the quarry operator was blasting the side of the limestone cliffs, uh, he exposed this clay layer, this lens, and they all kind of came tumbling out. In a half hour to 45 minute period, I collected 167 of these crinoid calyxes in absolutely beautiful condition. Uh, because they were preserved in clay, uh, there was no matrix around them, a little bit of a brush and soap and water, and they were cleaned. There's a couple of different species that came out of there. Mostly Mag Magistocrinus and uh, several Dolatocrinus species came out of there. Now, creatures, uh, even though they are a specific genus, there's many, many species within that genus. And let's take, for example, the Magis Magistocrinus. Um, here's one right here. Uh, it's a Mag Magistocrinus uh, multidecoratus. Now, you can see this is the, the crinoid calyx, this is the ball. Around the outside of that ball were where the arms were. And again, if you want to learn more about these things, you know, Google it or check my other video. And on top was this little spot here. And it really kind of, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, this is a crinoid calyx. Now, this is a magistocrinus, uh, one of the species, multi-decoratus. They call it that because of all these little cool decorations on, on the side of there. Uh, here's another one. Um, uh, called a Magistocrinus rugosus. Uh, it's the same type of crinoid. Again, there's the top of it. I should probably do it more like this. There's the top of it, and there's the side. You see those little holes right there? That's where the arms or the brachioles were attached, the feeding arms. And then on the bottom, again, you can see um, the, the bumps and, and protrusions on that Magistocrinus. There's another one here. This one's uh, called a concavus. And again, you can see there are minute detail variations within the, within the Magistocrinus. And again, this one's a little bit crushed. This one's a little bit flattened down. But again, you've got the top there. Uh, you've got all these little holes around the outside. Then you've got uh, the bottom of it right there. What's really cool is some of these crinoids had what's called an anal tube. Um, these creatures would eat food. Uh, as they eat food, as the arms would collect up all the food and bring it down to the center mouth right there, uh, it had to expel the waste products. So it had this little thing called an anal tube that came up from there. Sometimes when you're really lucky uh, and you're collecting fossils, you'll find one of these that's complete. And attached to the anal tube is a gastropod called a platycerus. The platycerus is actually a creature that fed off the waste products of the crinoid. Uh, sometimes you get really lucky and you'll actually find a platycerus attached to the anal tube and it was feeding uh, off the anal tube. Here's another Magistocrinus right there. So again, uh, we found a lot of these things in that one half hour to 45 minute period. Um, we also have lots of kinds uh, called uh, species uh, Dilatocrinus. Um, here's a species that's uh, really well recognized here in Michigan. Uh, this one's actually got that little five-pointed star on the bottom of it. Uh, that hole right there is where the stem was attached. And again, on top, uh, again, because these things were disarticulated, they were broken apart, the arms and the anal tube and stem are gone. But again, you can see the attachment points where those arms were. Here's another species, uh, tremendous detail on the bottom of this one. Wonderful crinoid. Again, um, that depression is where the stem was, and those are where the arms went. 
Um, again, I, I was just ecstatic when I was allowed to go in there and collect up these uh, 167 of these calices. Um, again, we've got a couple more here. Uh, again, a, again, a different species, different patterns, uh, different styles. Uh, but again, they all have basically the same structure. They're a ball at the top of a stalk. That's where the feathered arms were attached. They had an anal tube up here at the top. Um, what these crinoids look like, there's one right there from uh, Indiana. Uh, they've got the calyx here, the ball at the top. Uh, then they've got the stem that they're attached with. And on top are the feathered uh, feathered fingers, the uh, the arms that would filter, filter the food. Uh, these little arms right here had even smaller uh, uh, structures called pinules. The pinules would, on the end of the pinules are actually tube feet. They would capture the plankton floating in the water. They would feed it down inside and uh, it would go into five different parts um, uh, within the crinoid that would actually feed that down into the mouth and that's how the creature would eat. So this is what the crinoid calyxes and the arms uh, would look like, and there's a little piece of stem. Uh, down in Kentucky, Tennessee area, you'll find lots of large stems like this. Many of you that go out there uh, do find these giant stems. Most of the time, the stems are actually fairly small, but you can almost imagine how big these guys were, um, because uh, if you look at the attachment point right there, that little tiny round hole, and look at the size of these things, the calyxes must have been absolutely huge there. Um, here in Michigan, I find a lot of Ansocrinus bulbosus uh, crinoid holdfasts. That's what this thing is right here. Um, the bottom of it would rest uh, in the sand, and then these four points right here would actually be where the uh, rest of the holdfast would come out and attach this creature to the bottom of the ocean, to the substrate. I've got one more that's really kind of cool. Um, this is a holdfast from, um, from Indiana. This one comes from um, the Waldron Shale. Uh, a tremendous network of, of I don't want to say root system, it's the holdfast system. There's where the stem was attached to the to the creature, and all this right here, this is all holdfast, holding that creature down to the bottom of the ocean. So really, um, the crinoid is a spectacular creature. Uh, people ask me what my favorite fossil is. You know, I, I love my dinosaurs, I love my fossil fish, my uh, Devonian placoderms. Um, I love my crinoids. I can't really tell you which one's really the best, but I really do enjoy these these crinoids. They are a lot of fun. I've uh, been trying to collect some Ro uh, Rochester Shale crinoids, some complete uh, crinoids. I've got a couple, um, but uh, this is really fun. And again, you got to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, and unfortunately, or fortunately, I was. Uh, I haven't been able to get back into that quarry. They've kind of closed it back down again to anybody coming in because of mining regulations and OSHA regulations and things like that. Even when you have a mining certificate. Uh, I took the mining class, that took the safety class, even with a mining certificate. Sometimes they just don't let you into these quarries, and it's, it's, it's kind of a shame um, because people don't uh, don't respect the quarries. They don't respect the people. They throw garbage around, and they get hurt, and quarries have finally just shut down and said, no, you guys can't come in. So again, uh, crinoids, love these little guys, uh, about the size of a golf ball, um, beautiful little creatures, uh, lots of different species, and it's just a lot of fun collecting them. Again, just a quick little uh, video. Actually, it's gone almost eight and a half minutes now. Uh, if you want to see more about crinoids, again, Google them or go back into my history file and you'll see another program on crinoids. Y'all have a great time. Uh, right place at the right time. It's snowing like crazy right now out here in Michigan. I want to snow to stop so I can get back out and do some more digging. So y'all take care. Take care. Bye-bye.